Well, hello there and welcome to Mind Your Business. I'm Jennifer Anderson, host of the show. I'm also the executive director of the Georgina Chamber of Commerce. Mind Your Business is a show that we began really to discuss business and it's for businesses in the town of Georgina. And certainly as issues have come up over the last eight months, we've wanted to be uh, in touch with not only the businesses that are affected by these issues, but also let businesses know what is currently happening. And certainly as we hit mid-October, there was another stage that we went through over the, the course of the last eight months. We've been going through different stages. We've been progressing in York Region. And unfortunately, on October 16th, the Premier announced that we would be moving into a modified stage two, along with problem areas like Peel, um, Toronto, and Ottawa. So York was moved into that stage for 28 days. And then over the course of the last few weeks, we've been interested in wondering, you know, it, are we going to continue with the 28 days? Will it extend? Will we get better numbers in this area? But certainly the greatest impact that this modified stage two had on our uh, area is with local businesses. Uh, there were certain sectors that were greatly affected either with their modified openings or they had to close altogether. So on today's show, we have businesses from each of the different sectors that were greatly affected by this modified stage. And as we were planning this show, of course, we moved, York Region moved into uh, a new orange restrict zone as of November 7th. So that changed all of the dynamics again. We're thrilled to have our guests today talk a little bit about not only that modified stage but the new orange stage and what it means for those businesses i'd like to introduce them to you now robin smith is the owner of 24 7 energy fitness hi robin hi jennifer thanks for having me on the show Thank you for being here and certainly, you know, the gyms and the fitness sector was greatly affected by these stages. So I'm anxious to hear a little bit about what you're doing and how you're pivoting your business during this time. Uh, we also have Jen Eggett. She is the manager of HR and communications for Imagine Cinemas. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. Happy to be here. Thank you. And we certainly know that theaters were greatly and have been greatly affected with um, not just this stage, but each of the stages. Uh, and finally, the restaurant sectors um, have certainly been impacted. John Bailey is the co-owner co of Bailey's Homestead. Uh, John, thanks for joining us. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for having me. John, I'm going to start with you um, because, you know, we have certainly with the Chamber, we've created a Georgina Takeout Challenge. We've been running that uh, to encourage folks, not just during this time, but all the time to support local businesses and make sure that uh, they are reaching out and connecting with our local businesses. But um, let's start with Bailey's Homestead. What it is, you are located in the Georgina Ice Palace. Tell us a little bit about your business. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you for the program. It's amazing. The support has been outstanding. But uh, Bailey's Homestead, we've been in this location for six years. Uh, we are a family-run, operated restaurant that is a gathering place for the community. Uh, with the teams and, and, and everything that goes on at the Ice Palace, people just like to come and hang out and chat and obviously enjoy our home-cooked food. So, you know... As I ask this next question, you've kind of already answered that, and that's the effects over the last eight months. You don't you don't tend to have that gathering place, <laughs> especially over the last eight months. Yeah, you're correct. It, it it's been that's been the toughest part. Our takeout we've we've adapted to takeout and, and doing what we can, but even with our staff, our staff is family. So you know, removing some staff, just having the essentials running, it, it's been a very tough time. Yeah. Um, and I know with each of the stages as well, and, you know, we're just talking about that modified stage and we're talking about the new orange restrict, but we've gone through first, second and third stages already throughout the summer. And so with each stage, there's been a lot of differences uh, for restaurants. Yeah, they have been, you know, I mean, and it's, it, it's hard to predict or even really to keep up with because you don't, you have so many factors of inventory and, staffing and it's just it's it's been a whirlwind that let's say the least it's 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 been very tough we're glad where we are now and let's hope we can keep going on this stage as everything sort of comes back to the new normal again so yeah um, hopefully hopefully that's uh you know that's that's we're looking forward with this new framework seems to be okay but let's let's hope it sticks 
So you got the announcement about uh, the modification and it really was quick. It was October 16th as of the 19th, uh, no longer having indoor. Um, how does that how does that change? How do you amend current operations when it's that quick? Um, it, that's the tough part. Um, thankfully, because we've been in it so long, you know, inventory has been at a low, um, but to promote the business, to get the business going, it's very hard to predict that. So, you know, things that we did personally at this restaurant, you know, we launched a website, we put, put packages together, we made family meals, something that we could be versatile to say, even if you cut us back again, we're still going to be able to move forward with this line of products or this line of offerings from the restaurant. Um, for us, it was just, it, it's really about the staffing side of it. You know I mean? They're, they're sort of just waiting for a phone call. Right. Um, I want to go back to something that you said, because those are some of the, the different ways that you have pivoted over the last few months, including, you know, I know uh, there was family dinners that um, were really brought to the forefront uh, in terms of, you know, how you could offer food and how people could call and, and place an order. And that was that was pretty early on in the pandemic. Yeah, because you know, with Michelle and I, my wife, the other co-owner, obviously, we uh, we just tried to figure out, you know, we're a family of four, family of, of five, our oldest daughter's away, but ordering a single meal every time, getting everybody's needs, you know, it can be a little bit something that, you know, it's not quick. So for us, we're like, let's come up with some ideas of meals that we can make that'll feed a family of four and that they're, that they're home cooked, there's large quantities. So you can just, and then let's put them out through the whole week so you can pick and choose what week you want to order out um, because, you know, I get it. Not a lot of people were back to work at this point, but the people that were, they were, they were, they were working long hours. And again, it's a matter of how can we be convenient, but still operate our business. Right. Right. And at some point, uh, the boxes were also brought into that equation as well. And the ability to order boxes. Yeah. So with our supplier, Cisco, we, we partnered up, they came up with some ideas. We've kicked it around uh, together and we decided to put some restaurant quality protein boxes together that you can buy the box at you know the the wholesale cost and take it home and cook it as you need it with steaks and hamburger and chicken and that kind of stuff and really what that helped us was as you know or may not know in the food industry we have to have a minimum order put in for the delivery to come to us so those boxes that we were selling added to our order minimum so we could keep product rolling especially this far north in york region right Right, and it's it's worked fairly well. I'm assuming that some of these things, long at you know, once this maybe becomes just something we all talk about, that crazy 2020 year, <laughs> will any of these items stick in terms of you know they've been successful? Obviously, a new website and online ordering, uh, I would assume, would stick, and in future years, would be a valuable resource for your business. Yeah, and and for us, it's you know just sort of got us out of the stone age as a family restaurant, right? Let's get with the times, let's get with, you know, we're not a chain restaurant. We're just a little quiet, private owned uh, restaurant. And, you know, putting that forward to build the website, to put the boxes together, it just gives people the opportunity if they want to buy a bulk box of bacon, but don't want to drive to Costco, they can get it from us. You know what I mean? There's the, that's kind of what we're looking at of how can we still keep the lights on and keep somebody working and, and offer restaurant type food right you say you are a little family restaurant you have a great big heart in this community you do a lot uh, to give back to this community um is it going to be nice having you know whether it's uh the hockey um continue and skating starting up again as they start to kind of head back into the arena will it be nice to get back into that routine of seeing the community and seeing those folks that uh you support so much throughout the year yeah absolutely um the fact that uh the the support we've seen this far just it's just the give back from the support that we've been giving and being in the community our whole lives that's what we wanted to do and and that's what we're going to continue to do but it is just so nice to have people come in sit down, relax, they chat about their day. Our restaurant isn't a big footprint, but people talk among themselves, uh, even if they may or may not know them. So getting back to that point is a really big reason why we opened the restaurant. Um, and, and then also the offsite catering, 
you know, with especially this time of year, we're coming into Christmas, right? And this is a busy time for us to do business catering. And but we're getting we're getting some calls for those five, eight to ten people personal dinners they want us to make and bring it to. Them. Right. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate uh, the conversation. I appreciate uh, everything you do for this community, and I'm thrilled that the doors are open once again. Us as well. Thank you very much. All right. So let's bring Jen into the conversation now. Jen, tell us a little bit about uh, Imagine Cinemas. Let's start there. Uh, well, Imagine Cinemas, we are independently owned and operated. Uh, we currently do have 12 locations, and we opened our flagship location uh, here in Windsor, Ontario, Lakeshore Cinemas, and that was back in 2005. Uh, so really since 2005, we just really continued to grow. Uh, almost actually exactly a year ago to this date, we acquired the gem in Keswick, uh, which we rebranded to be Imagine Cinemas Keswick. Uh, we took that over November 1st, 2019, and we did spend the first week rebranding, renovating, and really freshening it up to put our Imagine Cinemas feel into it. Uh, and then on November 8th, we opened. So it's actually almost been exactly a year to the day. Let's talk about that. That's the, you know, you've done many grand openings and you do the grand opening in Keswick. You have this amazing vision of what the first year is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And to, I'm not sure anybody <laughs> could have imagined that this would be the first year. Um, this would be 2020 for anybody. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely 2021 a very different way than we imagined in Keswick. Uh, like I said, we opened in November. So the first two months were great. Uh, we were very, you know, very welcomed by the city of Keswick. And that was amazing. Uh, the general manager and the employees have been with us for a really long time, which is great. So they brought their expertise. Um, they've developed those relationships with all of the patrons over the last almost decade. Uh, so we were really, really fortunate to have them stay on with us. But like I said, first few months were great, and then unfortunately March hit, and it was it's been really really tough ever since. Having to close the location down, having to ever all of our locations having to close them down, having to lay off employees, it was really disheartening for the business. So it's been a, a tough year for sure. Well, and and certainly that has been not just this location, but all of the locations, and and because there are different locations in different areas, now you're dealing with things like a modified stage two for some, but not for others. So you really have to navigate um, the conditions that are happening around each theater. Yeah, that's definitely been one of the biggest challenges we've had. You know, everybody, thank goodness for the most part could open up at the same time and that was great. And then like you mentioned, different locations are obviously, you know, having a harder time than others. So then some had to close back down again. So it's been, the employees have been great. You know, really it's our employees that have gotten us through, right? Being patient with us, being loyal to us during these times. Um, Keswick, unfortunately it is still closed right now, but we are very excited and looking to open it back up at the end of this month for uh, the release of the new movie, Crudes. Uh, so we're really excited to, you know, get the families back and everyone back into our theater, hopefully at the end of this month. Well, and that's what we were talking about before the show started. It's the idea of, you know, there are announcements that are made. There are um, certainly across the province, there are uh, different stages of when we can open. And for a theater to open, um, it's a little bit more difficult because now you're dealing with that ripple effect of, um, you know, the movie companies and when they are delaying new releases and now you're reliant on a lot of different uh, outside um, efforts from other places to put everything into place. Does that make sense? Is that, that has to be difficult. We saw- Oh yeah, of, that's definitely, oh yeah, definitely been one of the more challenging things is the product, right? Having these brand new movies being delayed, you know, has been really tough for us. We're, like I said, we're really excited to get crews at the end of this month, you know, some brand new films on the screen. Uh, we've tried to obviously be as creative, you know, and as fun as we can. Uh, movies are really a great, you know, a great outlet during this difficult time. It's a great escape to get away and watch a movie, even if it's just for two hours to kind of put your mind, you know, away from everything going on around us. Um, so we've tried to be creative. We've introduced bubble screenings now, which have been really well received. So it's, you know, kind of getting your social bubble together, whether that's family, friends, uh, even corporations, um, you know, kind of thanking their employees, you know, for everything that has been going on this year. So we have groups kind of come in that way, you know, everyone that's in your theater. So people feel really safe in that way. They know everyone that they're with. All these protocols are still in place. And that way, you know, they may be able to see either something that is new showing or we do actually have a large repertoire of older classic films that we can dig into. So if you want to see, you know, one of your favorite movies up on the big screen and get a group together. So that's been really well received. 
Well, and I was just going to say, you know, in uncertain times when you are stressed and nervous, there's nothing better than an old classic. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> be able to sure. make you feel comfortable and be able to watch. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, um, what can we expect? I know you said, uh, you know, we hopefully in the next few weeks we'll see an opening. What are you hoping for your second year in Keswick? Um, because let's, let's create a wash for the first. So, yeah. so what do you see happening in this area over the next year? Well, hopefully, as we start to reopen at the end of the month, the restrict phase is definitely going to be tough. Obviously, as it's called the restrict phase, it definitely restricts the number of people that were allowed to have into our theatre. Um, but, you know, hopefully, as soon as possible, COVID-19 can be behind us. And then as we head into, you know, our second year, hopefully, you know, we can be able to have more people, more gatherings and get, you know, that back going. Um, but unfortunately, at this point, we don't know how long it's going to last. So, you know, we've put all of those safety protocols. We spent so much time you know, making sure that our theater is safe for everyone, our employees and our patrons. And we just want to create that safe and fun environment for everyone. So we're optimistic as we head into year two. Very good. And I, I just want to give a shout out as well about the website, because as you head to the website, those protocols pop up on every page as you're talking. And I know, you know, with different locations, there's different um, uh, openings and, and uh, safety protocols in place. But, but some of those standard protocols exist throughout the province. And it's nice to be able to see them and, and understand what your business is doing and how they are protecting their patrons. For sure. We want everyone to know what we've done and be prepared. And that way there's no guessing, right? Everyone knows, you know, what we what we've done for them. And that way they feel safe when they purchase their ticket online and they know they're gonna have a, a safe and fun time at our theater. Very good. Um any any other comments that you'd like uh Georgina to know in terms of, of the cinema and um the opening that's going to take place? Uh, well, we're just really excited, you know, to get back. And like I mentioned, you know, we're a family-oriented business. We know Keswick is a very family-oriented city, town. So really, we're really excited that it is a family movie that's coming. You know, we want to get those families back out to see us. Um, just thank you so much to everyone who has been loyal to us, who has come to see a movie. And for anyone who hasn't, you know, checked out our new Imagine Cinemas Keswick yet, please feel free to come on by. I think you'll really enjoy yourself. And those chairs. Yes. <laughs> and the chairs. Let's yes. end on the chairs. <laughs> yes, for sure. We did, uh, as I mentioned, as we did spend that one week renovating, we actually did renovate one of four auditoriums right now with the new luxury seats, and they are fabulous. So yes. if somebody who hasn't tried them out yet, definitely worth your time. Yeah. Jen, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Jen. Uh, another uh, sector that's been greatly affected not only by Modified Stage 2, but also um, I think all of the stages they've had a, a very rough go is the fitness and business um, businesses that are involved in the fitness sector. Um, Robin, let's talk. Let's talk wow. about the last eight months. Um, first of all, let's start with 24-7. Uh, this is and was a very big year, a very big anniversary that you were planning. Um, and like with Imagine, you never would have imagined that this year would end up the way that it has. It's so true. Happy 25th anniversary uh, to us. Uh, a very different kind of celebration, I guess. Yes. But we're still here, so... We're happy about that. Yes. Tell us a little bit about 24-7 Energy Fitness. Well, uh, we've been obviously supporting Georgina with their fitness goals for 25 years. I've owned it for 14 out of those 25. Uh, we're a 24-hour access gym with uh, tons, haha, tons of equipment uh, and uh, some of the best trainers in town. I got to say that. Yeah. Yeah, you do have to say that. Um, but certainly, you know, as as you have um, worked your way through 2020, there's been a lot of changes that have happened, not only in each stage, but just for your industry. So how have the last eight months been? Frustrating, disheartening, difficult. Uh, but on the flip side of that, you know, when we are open and we see our customers coming in and they're just so grateful that we're here uh, and they're so respectful and supportive of the changes that we've had to make, because certainly they, they affect us, but they affect every person who walks in the door, too. Uh, so there is no doubt that our, our customers are amazing. Right. Uh, your gym was one of uh, and 
sorry, the industry was one of the last to be opened as part of uh, stage three. So, you know, as you're working your way through and, and businesses start to be open, um, you know, you added um, frustrated and, you know, disheartening and, but also you had to be patient. <laughs> you had to be resilient in order to um, get to stage three. So that was also very difficult for your business in, in waiting until that stage three to open your doors again. Well, and, and that's true, but I guess one positive in being probably the last of the uh, businesses to be able to reopen is that we knew what we had to do. I mean, a lot of the protocols were very clear by then. Uh, so it wasn't like we got an announcement, you can open tomorrow and you have to do these 20 things. We did have a lot of things to do, but we were able to plan more effectively. So when we did get the announcement, you can reopen on, I think it was July 24th, uh, we were ready. All I had to do was show up and unlock the door. So. Right. right. <laughs> prepared and so yeah. you go from July 24th to August or October 16th where you receive another announcement that the doors are being shut again for what could be four weeks tell me about that that moment oh it was it was pretty upsetting uh, we had worked so hard uh, to make a safe environment for our staff and for our customers uh, and uh, then to have to close down again especially here in Georgina, where at the time we had zero active cases. Uh, so all of our businesses, all of us on the show today, were, were lumped in with some, all of York region where the numbers were, were bad. So yeah, that was pretty difficult, uh, difficult to take for sure. You really have been one of those businesses, um, business owners that has spearheaded some of the conversations with politicians uh, at a federal, provincial and municipal level. Um, you were fighting for all businesses in this area. Why? I, I think it's silly to ask this question, but and I think I know, but why was it so important for you to take on that fight? <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm comfortable speaking to those people. Uh, so uh, I thought I needed to be one of one of many uh, who was advocating. And it seems pretty apparent that COVID's gonna be around for a while. And uh, all of our businesses, are, they're important to us. Uh, we've put our livelihood into this. They're important to our customers for a variety of reasons. And I really think we needed to find ways to stay open safely within this environment. Uh, and if we have to make, you know, more strict protocols, then let's do that. But let's get our doors open and then let our customers choose whether or not they're coming, right? And we already know many of them aren't comfortable coming to a gym. They aren't comfortable eating in a restaurant yet. And that's fair and I respect that. But there are a lot of people who need us. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that goes, you know, uh, the health, aspects the physical aspects of health it also goes with the mental aspects of health so there really are a, a lot of reasons why people need the fitness sector yes absolutely uh, I am thrilled for you because you have made a lot of changes over the last eight months. You've really pivoted your business to, and you've found uh, different ways to um, add to your business. One of the ways is a new app that you are introducing. Are we introducing it really for the first time here? Yeah, uh, yeah, you did it, Jennifer. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Was I supposed to introduce it? <laughs> yes, it, we, sure, we have talked it, about it. <laughs> we did, and, and it's fine. It uh, should be ready to launch officially this week, the week we're in. So, so what is the app? Uh, so it's uh, Energy Fitness Virtua Gym, uh, and it's an app that uh, whole, pulls in a whole lot of different fitness components. So you can uh, look up workouts, right? Whether it's a workout that you want to do at the gym uh, or a workout that you want to do at home. So we're able to support uh, both uh, types of clients right now. Uh, videos on demand. So if you like the fitness class type of idea, well, you just pick on, I want to do a high intensity interval training today. And you can project that to your smart TV and other technical stuff <laughs> uh, and follow along that way. Uh, there's a nutrition component for food diary and meal planning and a whole lot more. I don't want to get too detailed yet. Some of it has to be a surprise, right? Right, 
right? But certainly, you know, like what we, uh, John and I had talked about and the idea that, you know, some of this was introduced during the pandemic. However, you know, will progress into the coming years, this app is certainly an example of that. That, well, it's great now as people are um, deciding, you know, their comfort levels of coming back. Uh, this is a great alternative now. It's also a great alternative in the coming years. Absolutely. It'll tie in very well with the gym when, when all the people come back uh, and they just don't want to think about the workout today. So they click on a button and then they get told exactly what they need to do. Right. Uh, you must be thrilled that uh, orange is uh, certainly better than a modified stage two. So that orange zone um, is moving in the right direction. Um, what's currently happening at the gym? Well, the big thing is the doors are open, uh, but there are some more rules than there were before. Uh, gyms specifically, the physical distancing has to be three meters. Uh, and that's a lot. I've actually got orange cones on the floor showing people what three meters distance looks like. Uh, so we need a lot of awareness when people are here. Uh, of course, maximum capacity within the gym, uh, booking appointments, a lot of that we were doing before. And masks uh, can only be removed when you're actively involved in vigorous activity. Uh, so we need to make sure that people understand that line too. We want to keep everybody safe and I want to stay open. Yeah, absolutely. And with the doors open, as long as we can uh, continue in the right direction, then um, those different stages and protocols will start to hopefully, hopefully diminish. Hopefully. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, as somebody who's very active in the community, what do you want people to know about um, not just your gym, but but businesses in your sector. What's important for people to know or understand? Well, I've spoken to many gym over owners over the past few weeks, uh, and certainly the ones in our community, and we're very dedicated to keeping our places safe. Uh, and uh, gyms seem to be getting a bit of a bad rap uh, in all of this, but I promise you that uh, the owners, certainly of uh, any of the ones in town, uh, want to do the right thing. We want to be here for our clients. And most of our clients are very dedicated to keeping the doors open, too. Uh, very honestly, I, th I think we're close, cleaner than grocery stores right now. <laughs> very good. That's, that is the perfect way to end this segment, to end this episode. Thank you, Robin, for being here. Uh, with me today and thank you to all of my guests who are on today's show for more information about these businesses please stop by their website check out what's currently happening with each of these businesses and on behalf of everyone at rogers tv georgina and the georgina chamber of commerce thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time on mind your business